Developer of CASOS project. Um, this is an open source project um, that delivers a home cloud experience for your single board computer like Lima board or Raspberry Pi. Um, today in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up a develop environment for CASOS from scratch. Um, first of all, first of all, the everything, um, all the steps are documented in this link, which will be provided as part of this video, uh, either at the end of the video or along with the link somewhere. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing um, is we want to make sure our uh, environment has Go installed. In my environment, I already have Go installed. Um, if you don't, you should go to uh, go.dev um, the website to download the corresponding version. Uh, I highly recommend Linux version because uh, Castle S runs on Linux. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, my environment, my desktop right now is Windows, but I'm actually uh, remote connected to a um, Ubuntu machine from uh, using SSH. All right. So uh, in addition to that, um, you should also make sure you have a Go Releaser installed. Uh, if you don't, you can go to, uh, easily go to their um, repository and understand what it what it does. Um, we should already have Go Releaser installed here as well before the video. Um, this tool um, packages all the packages. Also, it does the compilation. Uh, you could theoretically do Go build directly, but there's a lot of parameters we want to pass to the Go build tool, uh, Go build command. So we don't want to do that every time. So all the, everything is uh, described in the Go releaser YAML file, uh, which is uh, passed to this command. We will show how what we want to use, uh, how do we want to use this later in the, in the following step. All right. And we should also make sure um, all the compilers are installed. We use GCC because um, it's not, in addition to Go, we also use some Seagull module like SQLite. Um, it's not a pure Go implementation. It does rely on C compiler. So we use GCC here. You can also see there's some other, other architect, uh, architecture um, of the GCC installed here because uh, CASOS is a cross-platform project. All right, we could do GCC quickly, um, show a error which you expect to make sure it's installed. And we should also have Visual Studio Code installed, all right, which is this one. And um, as a prerequisite, you um, are expected to at least understand some basic uh, coding. Um, it doesn't have to be Golang because Golang is super easy to learn. Um, but at least you need to know at least one programming language. Uh, you don't expect to be familiar with Visual Studio Code, but at least you need to be familiar with one of the IDEs, uh, one of the popular IDEs. Uh, we choose co uh, code here because it has these extensions, uh, which is super helpful for our CASOS development. Uh, let me just quickly go through the extens extensions here. Um, this one, this uh, shell check, um, this one is useful for making sure that there's no um, bad errors in your bash script. Um, there's not a lot uh, linter for bash script. This one is a great one. I highly recommend. Obviously, we sh should also have this Golang extension installed. This is the official extension by Google. Um, it gives you compiler, uh, give you the language server give you the test um, adapter, a lot of functionality in there. We also recommend this extension um, by 42Crunch. Um, this one is a open API editor and it's also a viewer because in our later, later version of um, Class OS, we, we, we do start using um, 
open API as our API implementation standard so that the third party developer, if they want to consume our API, they don't have to code from scratch. They can simply, you know, take the open API YAML file and then generate whatever uh, client uh, or even server code uh, in their favorite language. And obviously we need this remote SSH because I'm on a Windows, I need Linux uh, as my development environment. So I need this extension to connect to that environment from uh, via SSH. All right, so uh, let me go back to here. And one of few settings we do need, um, let me go to remote. Let me go to this icon, open settings in JSON. Uh, we do need is these settings. Let me just briefly go through a couple of them. The first one is Go root. Uh, this is where the Go binary itself is installed. Um, this is the core. Uh, this is the path of all the core tools. And there's also Go pass. Um, th under this path, it has all the third party, should have all the third party tools and uh, dependencies. Uh, whatever packages you need in your code, it's going to be cached here. All right. There's some other uh, settings. I'm not going to go through them one by one. I highly suggest that you look it up, understand what it does. And then obviously you could, you know, add your own favorite setting by yourself. And I do hope that you share any more valuable settings with us so uh, we can apply it in our own development process. Okay. And okay, next step, obviously we need Git. Uh, I definitely have Git installed here. If you don't, uh, you can use this command to get Git installed. This command is for Debian variant. Um, you could use a Red Hat variant or RPM variant, um, but because currently CastOS is developed uh, towards Debian variant, uh, it's it's highly recommend you do use a Debian, uh, Debian variant distro, okay? Um, you could install a, a Red Hat variant RPM distro. Um, there, that might be some caveats you need to deal with, all right? So you should next step uh, clone all these repositories. Um, let me go to our folder. Uh, we don't have the repositories cloned. Let me copy these and get the clone started. All right. This should be pretty quick. So what is working on that? Let me just quickly go through what each repository does. Castle has common. This has all the common code shared by other modules. And gateway, this is a module that exposes the APIs from each modular uh, from the backend to the front end for specifically to the Castle S UI dashboard. By modular, I really mean these modulars. Um, the first one is Castle S user service. Right now, it's a simple service that take care of authentication. Um, it, right now, Castle S is a single user uh, system, but we could extend this modular to support multiple user or even online user via SSO or OAS2 uh, in future. Uh, next module is Castle S local storage. This module deal with all the local storage devices, um, disks, USB drive. Um, it also manages all the partitions. And this is our main module, Castle S. Right now, uh, I believe all the app management um, Docker lifecycle management, all the miscellaneous features are all here. In future, we might um, refactor the code uh, to extract some modules from it. Um, but right now, this is uh, the main module right here. Okay, so we see that this, all these repositories are cloned. One thing I do recommend is um, the using of Visual Studio Code workspace so that you don't have to switch between repository in different windows uh, of, of Visual Studio Code. Uh, since we don't have it here, you can manually add, create a new workspace and add each repository one by one. But just to save time, let's just do it directly 
by pasting this code and just do castlelands.code workspace and let me paste here save but all right so let me see okay so we have this file here let me just uh, open this word space file uh, code, code word space file with code um, oh as you can see before I prepared this video I, I was in this um, workspace so uh, it doesn't open a new window let me go back to here uh, I, I believe I do need to restart this VS Code session. Let me just do that. Uh, reload. Let's see. Okay, great. Not everything is lifted. All right. So, um, it has some errors. No such folder. Oh, okay. So, I don't need this folder. Let me just remove that. Okay. Um, the folder I removed has all the install script, which is beyond the topic of this video. Uh, we will get to that part uh, potentially in one of our future video. All right. So um, just so that we know that our code is uh, loaded fine, let me just go to any random main.go and we could hit um, control key and hit uh, left click of your mouse so that it go to the definition of these constants. Uh, we're not going to go through this specific code, but this is just to show that the extensions, the Go extension are installed fine. All right, so uh, as next step, how do we build a binary? Um, as we said at the beginning, we use Go Releaser. We could do Go Build, um, but because there's a lot, a lot of parameter we want to pass to uh, the Go Build, um, which are all stored in this file. Dot Go Release. Got dot Go Releaser. Dot uh, As you can see, there's some environment parameter. There's some flags. Um, there's some tags. There's some other things. Um, so that's why we don't just do it directly using go build. All right, so let me just co copy this line here. So what it does is, okay, let me just go to this path first. So that's local storage. Um, this should um, build a binary out of this repository. Um, first, what it does is it do it does a go generate. If you go to main.go of this repository, and in the first line, you should see this comment. And this is a feature of Go compiler. Uh, it basically tells Go compiler, whenever you do go space generate, it's gonna call this command. All right, so what this command does is it take the YAML file um, and generate the corresponding Go, uh, Go, Go API. So the developer can implement the logic behind the API. If you go to this API folder, uh, if you go to this open API YAML file, um, assuming you have the open API extension installed, you should see, you should see this little cute icon here, uh, which opens the preview of this API and it does define uh, all the methods. Um, we embrace API first development methodology. So whenever we want to add a new API, we come to this YAML file first, we define the API and we use the go generate command to generate the code, All right. So since we did run this go generate as part of go releaser, uh, let me go to, go to the generated code. It's, it's under code yet. Um, you see that this folder is grayed out. Uh, it's grayed out because it's part of the git ignore is here. 
Um, that's because it's generated, it's generated code as a best practice. We don't recommend checking in this code. That's why this folder is being excluded here. And if you go to this file, you can see all the methods, all the methods like get, uh, get merge at mount, um, and all the, you know, structures are defined in here. And like I said, none of these is handcrafted. It's all generated from this um, open API, open API spec. All right, so enough talking about open API. Um, in here, we will just do a go mod tidy just to clean up all the unnecessary packages, um, not being dependent on the, on the, by the code. And it will do the unit test, make sure none of them fail. Um, if all unit tests pass, um, it will continue and build the binary, which is this one. Looks like it's built fine. Let's run. Let's run this binary. Okay, great. So uh, it does get executed fine, and it does successfully return uh, the version, uh, which is this uh, 0.3.7. That actually simply means um, version. All right. So um, we. We, if we want to build all the packages, which, which we don't want to do it here because it's going to take a little while. But if you don't, you do want to build the packages so that you can distribute it um, for, you know, a broader te testing, you could do go release or release command with all the parameters, um, which will build all the table files. And you want to run this in every uh, repository so that you can, um, um, have all the packages built. Uh, you, if you only run this on the one repository, you only build the package for that repository. Okay. Um, now, how do we get started on debugging? Um, like I said, there's many packages. Uh, there's many repositories we just cloned. We definitely don't want to build every single them, which you could, um, if you have time, but, um, a better way is we want to install the official version of Cas OS, so we have all the stable binaries installed on this environment as a reference, so that you only work on the service, the module, the package, whatever you call it, that you want to change. All right, so let's go back to here. Let me paste that command and install our latest stable Cas OS. Okay, so um, while it is installing, I do want to go through a couple of guidelines for pull requests. Um, we apply this best practice where our main branch should be stable at any time point. Uh, so you shouldn't be checking code in to main branch. Um, theoretically, you shouldn't have permission, but just in case you do, don't check into main branch. You always make a branch, uh, preferably you fork under your own name and you make your change, you just submit a PR, all right? <clears throat> and um, we recommend you have, um, you do squash before you merge. Uh, you could have multiple small commits, but don't come, you know, merge all those commits uh, as, as uh, one by one. You wanna squash them into one, um, on standalone commit, so it's easier to review. And also it's the best practice to keep the branch history clean, all right? And before you want to add a new feature, um, it is necessary to provide a convincing reason uh, to the team on why you want to add this feature. Uh, what you don't want to do, uh, do is, you know, spend days working on the feature and then figure out, oh, this feature is being already being worked on some other people so that you waste your time. And if you fix a bug, um, it's highly recommended you name your branch, name your PR, or including the bug number. So we know which bar you're working on. All right. And you should make your PR as descriptive as possible. And preferably you can you know, you should do a live demo either via like GIF or some video or some screenshot so that everybody know what it is, how it's getting fixed. All right, so let's go back to this um, installation. Looks like it's been installed successfully. Uh, as of now, none of these is from 
the binary build out of that repository, out of the repositories. But let's just, you know, set up so that it's easier for us to debug in future. Uh, let me just create a user called CastOS. Uh, the password is just CastOS. Um, I don't worry about leaking that. Great. All right, great. So uh, looks like it is running. Let's go to the version is 0.3.7. Uh, like I said, these are stable version. Um, once it's installed, uh, let's say we want to work on this modular. We could, you know, work on any of these, or we could add a new modular. But let's say we're working on Castle S local storage. Um, there's there should be an uh, already a version installed. Um, uh, sorry, already a version running uh, because we just installed the official build. Let's just do. Um, System control list units uh, type equals to service, and then let's just grab all, all everything Star Wars Castle as. Uh, as you can see, this is already loaded. We 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 want to remove that because you want to debug the version that you are coding. You don't want to debug the one that's installed from the stable release. Uh, to do that, we simply do sudo system control disable now and castle as local storage service okay great so now it's been disabled all right so um let's go back to here so once we have that installed and we've also verified it's running fine now we should and we also disable the service we should start a debugger adapter let's just do that all right. So this um, debugger adapter, it um, runs under root permission and it opens a port uh, 2345. And the reason for that is uh, it theoretically could do um, debugging directly by running the binary, in this case, Castle S local storage. But because most likely you're you're running the binary under a non-root um, user like like I do, um, you will hit couple uh, uh, you know some errors because uh, local storage in in this example it doesn't need root permission to access like partitions, this things like that. Um, so we instead of running the binary directly under a non-root account, we run this command. Um, this is basically, you can think of it as a Trojan, right? It, it opens a port on the root so that you can pass that binary to here. How do we pass that binary to this adapter? Um, we use this launch JSON definition. Um, assuming you're familiar with Visual Studio Code, you should know that launch JSON defines how a debug session gets started, all right? So, let me to do that. Let, let's go to uh, run and debug, uh, Control Shift D, and then we do create a launch file here, um, and we could select any project or repository. But in our example, we select Castle S local storage, and don't we don't care about which one. Just click run random one. We all, all we need is this file opened, and we replace that with our own launch uh, JSON definition. So what it does is uh, it's, it says uh, it wants to use the debug adapter called DRV dev, which is the one being run here. And um, it does connect to the port, which is 2345, and it will be executing this binary. And this is exact the same binary here, All right? And we just verify this binary runs. Um, by putting a dash V and which returns the version successfully. All right, cool. So um, once we have that, we can just now click uh, start debugging. Um, before we do that, we can just so that, oh, oh, let me say first, just so that we prove that we're not debugging the released build, we're debugging the build we built from this command line. Let's go to say route. Let's just randomly pick a 
method connected hooked with, uh, for, uh, with a API. Let's say this one, get storage list. All right, so let's go back to run and debug and click on this run. All right, so if we come back to this window, oh, you can see it has already has some outputs, some logs. Um, we, we, we don't want to go through each uh, single line of log to explain what it does, but we do want to see, what we do want to see is this line. It says local start services is listening, all right? And uh, to prove that this is running uh, the binary we just built, we go back to our dashboard, we refresh, just so that we know that the, the Castle S is still running. Let's click on this little gear icon on storage so that it costs gets local, uh, gets uh, storage list. All right, so now you see this window is flashing. All right, so we can see that it's suddenly hit the breakpoint and we can, you know, simply step through each line and we can hover over the variable and see what's inside that variable. So let me just continue. So as of now, we've got a working development environment for Castle S you should be able to uh, get started working on either a bug or a new feature. And like I said, this link will be provided along with, with the video. And if you have any question, uh, you can go to our um, Discord channel. Um, there's a, a Castle S Dev channel. You can ask whatever question you want to ask and we are looking forward for your contribution. Thank you very much.